Pyromania. Oh, no kill! Death! Really death? Oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah. Oh, oh, fuck! Christ, no can hear more thing. Viral, I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No! Ah, motherfucker. That's bad. I think I'm starting to hear colors. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Nash. Today, we're going to talk about Airsoft Night Games. Today, I want to focus on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to focus on gear and then tactics within night games themselves. So, for night games, torches are incredibly important. Generally, when I play night games, I carry three different types of torches on me. I carry a head torch, woo, which you can see on my head. A gun torch, which will be mounted upon my gun with a little kind of rail mount, you can see just there. Uh, and secondly, I... Thirdly, <laughs> thirdly, I will also be carrying this little kind of hand torch here with, well, the one I have, it's just a little twist kind of thing. So, what are each of these used for? Uh, first of all, we'll have the head torch. The head torch is not really used while you're playing. This is kind of more of a navigation tool. When you're traveling in between games, you're probably going to have some sort of bit of navigation. And yes, you could use a hand torch if you wanted to, but the head torch is generally a lot easier, especially if you're playing around with your gear. Because if I am, for example, getting my gear in and out of a car, or if I am trying to organize my kit, or see what I'm doing when I'm trying to do maintenance on a gun, I want both my hands free, and that's where a head torch is really, really, really valuable. The gun torch is kind of an obvious one. Uh, a lot of people use these during day games anyway to try and blind players. In Airsoft Night Games is used for exactly the same kind of principle. You have the quick opportunity where they are blind and they have lost their night vision and their eyes are trying to adjust to your light being shown in their face. However, after a few seconds, maybe five or so, they'll quickly realize where exactly you are because of your torch and start taking pop shots at you. Um, that introduces the problem with torches in the first place. Uh, a torch, say, on a gun or on my head like that could give away your position very, very, very easily. And for anybody who is hidden and not using a torch, it present, uh, presents a very, very good target for them and they will shoot the crap out of you. Your gun torch, you're going to want a rail mount, just like that there. Uh, you're also going to want either a uh, touch-sensitive trigger, don't know what they're called, or you can have a little push button like this thing here, and that will actually turn the torch on and off. So we have the handheld torch. Now you may think this is a little bit silly to have in the first place, because if I've got a head torch and a gun torch, why do I need a third one? It seems a bit silly. Well, it's not, realistically. So a lot of problems that uh, airsofters have during night games is that when their torch is on, they will find that they get shot at. You can use this to your advantage, and a hand torch helps you out with this. You want to put this down in a position where you want to draw the enemy's attention. Typically, if you are defending the entrance for a room, for example, put it in a corner where an enemy might suspect that you are, and then actually be somewhere else. This can draw their attention to the torch, looking for you, and then you actually can take them down from another position. Very, very good tactic. Another thing which is really uh, good to use a hand torch for is if you are, for example, in a room and you put down the torch in front of you, it will make it very, very hard for an enemy to see whatever is beyond the torch because they will be partially blinded by it and allow you a very, very good view, obviously, of whatever your torch is shining on. The torches aside, let's talk camo. Now, a lot of people go into night games with the assumption that black clothing is the best thing they could ever wear. They're going to blend in with the shadows and they won't be seen at all. No, completely wrong. Once people's night vision adjusts to the darkness, you will stand out like a sore thumb. You've got to think it not as, I'm wearing the darkest clothing, therefore I'm invisible, but I have the lowest contrast, therefore I'm invisible. Now, this sort of clothing here, just the standard airsoft stuff I would wear, I will wear to a night game as well because it blends in with 
a building I'm against, it blends in with if I'm against grass, it's fine. If you are wearing all black, you will not blend in with your environment. This rule holds in day airsoft and it also holds in night airsoft as well. I mentioned a couple of times night vision. Well, you might be thinking about that little kind of green screen thing you classically see where people can see in the dark. That's not what I'm talking about night vision. That's something completely separate and not what a lot of airsofters can afford. Night vision, I mean, is when you have all your lights off and your eyes will slowly, slowly adjust to the darkness. Usually it just takes around about five to 10 minutes to happen, but then you will get a much better view of what's going around, on around you. If you've got a little bit of background light, for example, if you're near a city or if you have moon shining, this will help you out even more. Night vision can be ruined, however, with torches. Uh, you've gotta be very, very careful about your light discipline. If you think it's a really good idea to shine a light on basically, you know, if you're adjusting stuff in your gear or you're trying to like look around for your friend or anything like that, be very, very, very courteous to other of your teammates' night vision because if you ruin their night vision, then that is them at a severe disadvantage for them spotting a potential enemy player. Make sure if you're using your light, there is a proper use for it and you're not trying to hamper your teammates' night vision as well. Next thing I want to talk about is tracer units. Uh, what they look like is little kind of suppressors like this. Now, these are really, really cool pieces of kit. What happens is you will buy tracer BBs, which you can then load into your gun, and you will attach the tracer unit to the end of your gun. This little switch will turn on the tracer unit. Don't keep it on all the time or you'll waste your battery. Then, when you send a BB through the tracer unit, you will have a little flash go off inside the tracer unit and that will light up the BB so that it's now glowing in the dark. This will allow you to see exactly where your BBs are going and it's extremely useful in the dark. Um, I would definitely buy one, but the one thing you gotta make sure is that they also give away your position, so you have to be very, very careful with that. Generally, when you're firing an enemy, you have to be aware that as you're firing, you will have a slight flash going off from the end of your tracer unit. And if the enemy is being aware at all, they'll be able to see your approximate position. The idea of the tracer unit is to allow you to have good accuracy. But when you're using it, if you want to use it so the enemy doesn't get a good beat on your position, play as a sniper would. Fire a little bit, then change your position, fire again, and keep changing your position so that the enemy can't really guess exactly where you are. Don't bring along high caps. High caps row like crazy. They will give away your position and <laughs> make it so much easier for the enemy to find you. They are a bad thing. Don't use high caps in a night game unless you can't help it. Another good topic to talk about for night games will be goggles or eye protection. Uh, you guys might know from watching a few of my videos that I usually wear these kind of mesh goggles here. These are a horrible thing to wear during night games and are effectively like wearing sunglasses at night. You want to avoid any kind of tinted goggles, mesh goggles, anything like that which will hamper your vision at all. Generally, you'll want to wear clear goggles. What you can also wear, however, are yellow goggles like these. Yellow goggles, if you don't know, enhance your vision and allow you to see a lot better contrast when you're playing. Uh, this is what I use during night games. They work brilliantly. The only thing you got to worry about when you're wearing glasses like these is fog. Fog is a big, big issue during night games because the weather is so much colder. So if you can, try and get some anti-fog for your glasses as well. During a night game, you got to make sure that your footsteps are very, very quiet. You got to make sure that you don't have any nasty high caps or BBs rattling around. And you got to make sure that you're not talking when you're not supposed to. Uh, you can never be too sure, unless you're playing really, really, too, uh, really, really smart, when you're going to have an ambush or some enemy player might be watching you. So you have your AGs, you have your glass blowback guns. Spring guns in night games are bloody awesome. Spring guns will be very, very quiet and make it a lot easier for you to stay hidden during a night game. Uh, they're amazing, amazing for ambushes. I highly recommend bringing along one if you can. Uh, especially sniper rifles, they're amazing, as long as you can make out exactly where your target is. That's it for my night game tips and tricks video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you have any questions that you want to ask me, or if you have any comments that you want to add to the video, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time.